Welcome back, Shalligators. Are you guys feeling fancy? We're talking about Iggy Azalea today. You guys probably heard that she purposely on TikTok leaked some DMs from very famous dudes, like 8 million, 12 million, 27 million followers on Instagram. And their messages are the thirstiest, cringiest, grossest ugh, dreck in the world. And it gets us all to thinking, right? If really famous guys are going to slide into another famous woman's DMs and be vulgar or desperate, what chance do any of us have, right? Can you find a quality man in your DMs? What are the red flags we should be looking for? How can we slide and make it a little bit more effective, right, if that's what we're trying to do? And more importantly, how can we be sexy and feel good about ourselves and, you know, exude that sexiness, but not have people treat us like a slut? right? Because some of the ways dudes were speaking to Iggy, it's like, do you have any respect for her? Like at all? It's so gross. I'm going to break it all down. I'm going to give you tips. And I'm also going to read you some Tinder nightmares because I don't get thirsty DMs. I get thirsty, horrible Tinder messages. Ah, we're going to break it all down. Speaking of DMs and messages, if you have a message for me, a love problem, something you need help with, head on over to my website, shallonlester.com. I don't really read my DMs on Instagram just because I get so many. If you do have something you want to say, some feedback, leave it as a comment on my Instagram. I see all of those. Like, leave it up there. A-OK, -okay, I'll get back to you on that. But if you would like to connect with me in a different way, maybe do a little video chitty chat. You can find me on Cameo if you want a shout out, get some help with a love problem, birthday present for a friend. If you're in England or the rest of the UK or Canada, you can find me on Memo, M-E-M-M-O. It's kind of the uh, international Cameo equivalent. And head on over to Flace. It's our uncensored ad-free platform where we're talking wieners, blowjobs, all these nasty things that no one wants to talk about here on YouTube. So I'll demonetize the video. Not over there they won't. So we can be as nasty as we want to be. Speaking of nasty. Mm, 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 mm. Some of these messages. Ah, she got a message. Okay, so Iggy posted this on TikTok. She posted a TikTok video of her like dancing in a wildly unflattering outfit. Like tube tops and bike shorts. Stop wearing these things. Stop wearing these things, ladies. Fashion is in like the darkest place imaginable. It's just like not attractive. And she's got a good body. I'll talk about her body in a second because I have first person experience. But this guy with 27 million followers, she redacted all the good stuff like who it is. Like, girl, if you're going to do it, do it. You're going to spill the tea, spill it. She posted, he, he DM'd her, I want to kiss the inside of your butthole. Like I said, like I said, uh, this is how a famous person treats ostensibly another woman on his level, another famous woman. Maybe, I don't know how many followers she I don't know if it's 27 million, but she's pretty goddamn famous. These, she should have exposed this. Like, then he's the butthole guy. It could have been like, Rich the Kid butthole man, or what, whoever it is, whoever it is. Somebody else said, oh, can I marry you? He's got 12 million followers. Calling her his dream baby. Another dude sent a string of I love you messages. The most desperate messages, however, came from someone with 8.9 million Instagram followers who, followers who offered to pay you for your time. I'll give you 15K just to speak to me and have a conversation over the phone or on here. I'll cash app the money. Another dude offered to marry Iggy and vowed to protect her better than she'd been by ex Playboy Cardi. Now, Iggy has had a rough few years. Her career has not really gone anywhere. You know, she came out so hard out of the gate with Fancy and it was like everywhere that summer. And then like, she kind of bombed on a freestyle. Remember that? Like with Tia. And she hasn't done a ton, but she's had some really bad dating luck. I mean, she dated Nick Young, that dude, that basketball player. And like they broke up. I think he got back together with his baby mama. And I did a video back in the day when it happened on like dating a guy who's still obsessed with his ex. Like, what do you do? And then recently she was dating Playboy Cardi. They had a baby, a little son named Onyx, which is cute because her real name is Amethyst. Why, if your name was Amethyst, would you go by Iggy? What? It's like how Saweetie's name is Diamante. Like, hello? It doesn't get better than that. It's like if I went by Jane. I like the name Jane, but I mean, Shallon's pretty fancy. If you're going to be a celeb, like, have a fancy sparkly name. Anyway. So she had a baby with Playboy Cardi, and then they broke up because... <sighs> Prepare to be shocked. Are you ready for this? 
he was unfaithful. Ah, I know. I mean, who could have seen that coming? Who could have seen that Nick Young, a professional athlete, was probably going to be unfaithful? What? No, what? Yeah, dude. Yeah. So I can see why she's not really entertaining these rap dudes, but also I cannot picture Iggy Azalea dating anyone but rap dudes. She has morphed her body into what she thinks, I believe, the rap community wants to see, right? I was on a flight with her, la not last year because no one did anything, but the year before I was sitting in front of her and I had a feeling she was on the plane because like when you walk in, like right by the door, like by first class, there's like a little list of all the names of people who are in first class. So if you ever on a plane and you're like, I wonder if there are any celebs, like look at the little list there. But I saw it as I was walking on, it said Amethyst. And I'm like, how many rich people could be in first class that are named Amethyst that aren't Iggy Azalea, right? And sure enough, she was sitting right behind me. And I was like, I like turned it. And like, we just like exchanged a few words. I wasn't like, I'm a fan. I was like, do you know where? I was like, are they serving champagne? Yeah, something like that. And she's like, they better buy. I'm so ready for a drink. I was like, me too, girl. She is beautiful, like beautiful, beautiful face. Her, her skin is like, like a mask, like a poreless, perfect mask. Her body is man-made. Her proportions were just like comical, you know, and I'm not body shaming her. I'm like product shaming her because it's, it's a product. Like she, she wasn't born like that. Like, I just don't understand this trend of like, girls like the Kardashians, they get like this filler or fat transfer or something on like their hips so that their hips are super round because they're like, we don't want the hip dips. Why? Why? I think it looks so weird and unnatural when girls are like that perfect round, like Kardashian shape. I think it's so bizarre. And hip, hip dips, they don't, you know what? They don't need a name actually. They don't need a name. You know why? Because they're simply how your body is. You don't need to put a name to it. It's just, it's just body. It's just hips. Like, are we gonna fill in our elbows here? I just want it like, like squared off. I want like a bulbous, bulbous point. I just, can we like block these? Cement up the nose? Turn up my vagina? Where does it end? We don't know, but we have to stop. So on one hand, I can see why Iggy didn't entertain these dudes. But on the other, it's like, Iggy, who is your audience? You're gonna end up dating a rapper or a basketball player eventually. Like, come on, you build it and they will come. But like I said, we look at some of these messages and it's like, fuck, man, if that's how they're going to treat a celebrity, <sighs> no wonder guys are douches in my DMs. I don't really get a lot of DMs from guys. I, I do from like, they're like, <laughs> guys who are like freshmen in college and they're like, let's make out. I'm like, I, you know what? I'm good. They must have like watched my kissing video or something. They're like, oh, but I get a lot of really terrible Tinder messages. Not actually, not a lot, but when they're bad, they're super bad. Would you like to see one? Fantastic. This is a dude named Grant in Bozeman, Montana. I'm not protecting your privacy because you're a dick. And you know what, Grant? Maybe, maybe you should be a little bit more careful about who you talk trash to. It just might be a YouTuber. You idiot. You could have just Googled my name. You don't even need the last name, baby. Shallon stands alone. So this dude who's like kind of cute, but you can tell he's like a peak 22, like he's going to end up fat but he's not fat yet. So I was like, okay. He writes, Ayo, A-Y-O, dead from the first word. Ayo, you should go downtown tonight. Ha ha, is this how you introduce yourself? I said, I added the ha ha to like soften it. I did not mean ha ha. I was not ha ha in IRL. He writes back, do you want me to bullshit you or be honest? Interesting that polite doesn't seem to be a choice. Hmm. Polite could be a lie. This is Tinder, not a talk show. Can you imagine how psyched he was for, at himself for like thinking of that? I'm sure he's like, oh, this is Tinder, not a talk show. This is Tinder, it's not a talk show. Like he just probably said it over and over in the mirror. I write back, yes, I can see that any politeness from you would be pretty fake. Oh, and P.S., here's the thing. His age listed on Tinder was 25 and he writes in the bio, actually 23. And P.S., you don't need to put in your bio that you're actually 23. Trust me, brother, it shows. That was one of the nicer messages I wrote back to. You know, what the nicer messages I sent. Guys are insane. They're fucking insane. Here's the thing though. Their insanity, girl, it's got nothing to do with you. They shoot their shot. There's a reason that that term exists. I'm shooting my shot, I'm shooting my shot, right? They love a good sports metaphor. I'm gonna give you a metaphor too. Fishing. Do you guys remember the band Gym Class Heroes? Like, oh, they were so good. 
I was friends with Travis, the lead singer. Um, he's still really close with my best friend. And this was like in the MySpace stage, right? And he's like, I'm talking to all these girls on MySpace. I was like, really? You're not just talking to one? Or like some, I said something dumb and naive like that. He's like, no. He's like, I. it's like fishing. I copy and paste the same message to like 30 girls to see who replies. And then I go with it. And I was like, this is like evil genius. You don't like look at their page and, oh, I see you like this band. He's like, no, no. I have just a stock thing that I say. No, it's fishing. You just cast, 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 cast. And you see where you get a bite. Like a smart fisherman's got like a ton of lines in the water because like, otherwise you're wasting your time. You're being inefficient with your time. And I'm like, that is a complete nightmare. But I can see that it's also really probably true. The point is, what Travis was doing, what, what dudes are doing, what this fucking dipshit's doing. It's not about you. There's nothing that you're doing that is like creating this behavior in a guy. That's actually not true. As I'm saying this, that's not true. Sometimes it is. This is, this is a tricky part because sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Like what makes a douchebag a douchebag is that he acts douchey no matter who his audience is, right? He could be faced with like, the most poised, beautiful girl in the world, or like, just like Crystal, and he would still fuck it up. Like, he would just be like, you wanna go back to my house, do some scratchers, maybe take some oxy, suck my dick a little. And the girl's like, I went to Princeton, no. And Crystal would be like, fuck no, Dennis, I goddamn told you that last week, I'm sucking your dick for a scratcher, right? He's gonna do, he's gonna shoot his shot, notice that my friend who is DMing girls or my spacing girls, same message, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. They're not tailoring it. So yeah, they're gonna piss off some quality girls, but they're not looking for quality girls. They're looking for something easy. They're looking for something immediate, sex, attention, whatever it might be. It's only just sex and attention. We can just stop right there. It's only those two options. So yeah, it's like lower standard, higher average, right? So of course they're probably gonna let some like quality chick slip through the net. Whatever, who gives a shit? This dude in my Tinder didn't give a shit. And I'm like, do you not know who I am? And you know I say that a lot and I don't mean like, I don't mean fame, I don't mean any of that. It's like, do you know who I am? Do you know my education? Do you know my eloquence? Do you know my mind, my heart, what I do, where I live, what I drive, how much my dog loves me? Do you know any of this stuff? Baby boy, you find out, oof, that's gonna hurt. And you will find out because it's a small ass town. See you soon, Grant. So you know how I said, actually, Maybe there are things you're doing. There might be, there might be. Iggy looks how she looks. She's got a sleeve of tattoos. She's wearing not a lot in 80% of her Instagrams. She's surgerized into oblivion. And we've talked so much about how that is super indicative of low self-esteem. It is. It's like, I get filler, I get Botox, you know, but like in terms of these large scale, not like, I just want to improve on what I have. I want a completely different body. I want to like Kylie Jenner myself. Instead of working on loving myself as I am in the lips I have, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just going to fix it. I'm going to hope that an external solution results in an internal shift. And that is never how it works. That, God, I wish it did, right? I wish it did. A lot of us have like lost weight, not been happier. Our boobs got bigger, eh, didn't really matter, right? My point is, girls like Iggy, who post really thirst, I mean, thirst traps, you post a thirst trap, you're going to catch something in that trap. And it might not be something you want, right? So look at what you're doing. One thing I offer as a service is an Instagram review. If you go to my website, shallonlester.com, you guys can like submit your Instagram and I will review it for you and tell you what you're doing right and doing wrong. And the number one thing people are doing wrong is posting what I call Kylie shots. You know what I'm fucking talking about. You know what I'm fucking talking about, right? Ass, titty, t like really serious. When does Kylie Jenner ever look silly, jolly, jovial, unbothered, candid? Never, never. I mean, she's had so much work. She looks kind of weird when she smiles, right? I mean, that's, that's how filler goes. You know, I get it. But she's all, it's very like, I take myself so seriously. And yet I'm not very confident. That's how it reads on the rest of us, right? So if you're like taking like Kylie shot after Kylie shot after Kylie shot, 
If you only post yourself, shit, what do you think people think about you? Studies show the impression is you only think about yourself. And girls who only think about themselves are kind of easy to manipulate. It doesn't seem like that, but that is the impression that dudes get. Because if you're only focused on yourself, your life is very one-dimensional, right? You're usually not very confident. Confident people, hey, I'm, I'm going to go make friends. I'm confident enough to apply to law school. I'm confident enough to join that running club. Girls who are only sitting there taking pictures of themselves, well, boring people do boring things. Interesting people have interests. So if you're posting these thirst traps and you're like, oh, guys, just treat me like a slut. Well, honey, your social media is a commercial for who you are. What's the product that you're selling? I mean, I'll, I love a good thirst trap. I'll post one, but it's not all I post. And I temper it with a different product, my mind, my heart, my altruism, whatever that might be. If you're only selling one product and someone's buying it, I mean, hello? But let's say that's not it. Let's say you're like a normal person and you get like creep after creep in your inbox. Like I said, don't take it personally. They are copying and pasting this. What you do not do is respond. I responded to this guy because I honestly, I wanted to like trap him and have something funny to post on Instagram. He walked right into it. Is that my fault? No. Ooh, babe, you were hoping to catch a woman for something. I was hoping to catch a man for a completely different purpose. Watch out. I'm a way better predator than you are. Anyway, responding, even if it's polite, like, oh, no, thank you. I'm actually not interested. First of all, then it becomes a dialogue. They see a challenge. They're like, oh, okay. They're going to write back something maybe a little charming. You're going to respond. It, and now and now you're having a conversation. Now they got you. Hooks are in. Or you're like, hey, like I'm actually not interested. I had a boyfriend. Fuck you, bitch. Look at what happened to Iggy. She didn't respond to some thirsty dude. Two days later, your music sucks. Oh, that's typical. You see guys like this, you're not interested, block and delete. There is this idea that we all have to look so unbothered. I'm not bothered. I'm not bothered. Me bothered? No, I'm not bothered. I'm bothered about a lot of things, right? And I deal with things privately. Your networks are your real estate. I always say, people who chirp me on Instagram, you're in my house. Your feelings don't matter here. Mine do. I make the rules. I can kick your ass out whenever I decide. I can treat you how I want to on my property. People act like there's some sort of, I know I've said this before, like some sort of Geneva convention for like how YouTubers and influencers are supposed to behave to haters. There's not. I don't even have a boss. Try me. Anyway, I digress. You have the right to kick someone off your property. Hey, you don't behave like that here. Bye. And maybe they're going to get a memo. Hmm. Damn, she blocked me. Was what I said that bad? Hey, Tyler, do, read this. Was this that bad? I didn't think so either. Caitlin, read this. Was this that bad? Really? Oh. Not, I shouldn't go with, I shouldn't go with butthole next time. Not, not butthole. Okay. You never know. This week on the podcast on Girl on Top, check it out. We're talking about beta males and when they neg beautiful women or when they're, it's like, oh, like I live in my mom's basement. I'm covered in my own cum and Cheeto dust, but mm, Giselle, no, I don't like her. She's got too many freckles and women need to have a PhD. It's like, what the fuck? But look, in that podcast, I say, because the girl's like, guys like that keep moving the goalpost. Why do you keep playing? You only notice the goalpost is moving because you're still on the field. Walk your ass away. The reason people like that thrive is because we allow them to. We give them an audience, right? We're like, well, okay. We don't block them. We don't delete them. If you want to respond, be like, you are so inappropriate and ridiculous. Do not speak to a woman like this. Don't try and be like, I mean, I know that I responded like cheeky. I was trying to like draw him into something. I just wanted to fight. You know, I was just in a bad mood. I was like, today's not the day, motherfucker. Okay, not the day. But if you are going to respond to them, be like, don't speak to a woman like that. Don't speak. I don't care if all you want is to get laid. And that's what pissed me off about this guy. Like, I'm not looking for a serious boyfriend at all. I'd be down to have someone I could have fun with. But like, you come at me so rude. You can't even like fake it over text. You can be on the toilet. You can't even like do this in a way that's like decently respectful. Now, this is when the trouble starts. This is when the trouble starts. I'm not gonna be nice to you. I don't need to be, right? 
block, delete, move on, chirp back in a way that's going to shut him down completely. Chirp back, then block, right? You, he's, it's not a court of law. He doesn't get the right to respond. Fuck him. But let's say that a guy isn't coming at you about buttholes and whatever. Let's say you just don't know. You've like gone through his networks. You're like, I don't, I mean, he looks normal. I, I don't know. In this day and age, it is not impossible or ridiculous to think that we can meet people in our DMs. If you have someone in common, it's like, hey, I saw you at Lisa's wedding last summer. I never got to say hi. Oh my gosh. Like, oh, I think I've seen you at Starbucks. Like you always order the double grande latte, whatever. Like, I just think you're really cute. If, th if this is like the only way they have to interact with you, okay. Okay. First of all, if it's not flushed, fucking flushed, I get questions from you guys all the time. So this guy who I go to school with, he's in my DMs and we talk all the time or he wants to like hook up, but he won't talk to me in real life. <sighs> it hurts my heart to hear that. It's insane. Girls, that's insane. If a guy has access to you in real life and he's not speaking to you in real life, no. Further, further bold statement, if he has access to your phone number or could ask you for your phone number and he prefers to keep it in DMs or on Snapchat. Do you know why? He has a girlfriend. He's a fucking girlfriend. Or he just doesn't really give a shit if he talks to you. DMs, Snapchats, those are secondary networks. Nothing comes before text, right? Nothing comes before text. You look at your text, you get it. So if a guy's really into you in a way that's like valid and respectful, he's not going to risk being in these secondary DMs. I never look at my DMs at all. I on. I don't snap, whatever. He's not going to risk going into that like spam pile. He's going to be like, no, no, no. I'm going to be in the main box. I want her attention. I want her to know that she's a priority and I want to be a priority for her. He's going to come correct, right? Please don't forget this. But again, what if he's in your DMs and you just don't know? What are the red flags? I found, and this is from like tindering and stuff that like, if guys want to get together really, 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 really fast, red flag. I don't want a digital pen pal. And I tell guys this, it's like, they'll like try to text me for weeks on there. And I, I'm like, put up or shut up, dude. Like put out or get out. If you want to meet up and have a drink and see how the chemistry grows, great. I'm down for tomorrow or the day after. I am not looking for a digital pen pal or like to boost your ego. I actually have something that I do for a living that's pretty special. I, I don't give this shit away for free. You want my time, you can book me like everybody else. I sound like a sex worker. <sighs> if only I was smart enough to charge for it. So that's red flag number one. They're here for a good time, not a long time. They're not patient. Hey, let's get together tonight. I just swiped on you. Come out tonight. Hey, yo, come downtown. Ah, no thanks. Another red flag, the info dump. Blah, 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 blah. They're talking all about their history and their day. And it's, you're getting these paragraphs. Do you know why guys do that? It's so that when they try to fuck you after actually only meeting up with you once and you're like, wait, we don't even know each other. You know what he can say? Of course we do. Look, I told you about my dead parakeet and my aunt's trip to Spain and my childhood trauma and my day and you know all my coworkers. Now, what do you mean we don't know each other? Men, a virus constantly adapting, right? So that's another red flag. For me, the biggest fuckboy red flag in the world is, and I've encountered this so many times on Tinder, they'll be like, we should get together. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm down, make a plan. Where do you wanna go? I would say the same thing, gentleman's choice. I don't fucking plan the dates, dude, right? I'm going to have the babies wax the vagina. Like, I don't need to like also add this onto my plate. You live in the same town I do. You have the same Google I have. Figure it out. So they'll pick a bar. And I'm like, I love like country bars, dive bars. They'll pick a bar. Then when we're like two hours away from the date, you know what would just be easier? Maybe if you like came over here and brought a bottle of wine. I literally write back to these motherfuckers. I was like, first of all, I'm not going to your murder house. Okay. This isn't a dateline special. Number two. I don't want to sit in someone's house. I could sit in my own house. I guarantee it's nicer than yours. Number three, oh, you will allow me to bring you wine? Interesting. Or if they say, I'll get us some wine, I don't really trust your judgment on wine. You're 23. As much as I want to slap the bag on a Wednesday night, no thanks. If a dude can't meet you out for a drink, he's either broke or he's a fuckboy, Usually those go hand in hand. He's trying to get you to his house for a reason. It's not a compliment. And if we really, really want a boyfriend, it can it can be tempting to see it that way. It's like, oh, he just wants to like cuddle on the couch. He wants a blowjob. 
he wants a blowjob. Go over there and charge him for it. And be like, oh, I'm sorry, that's 50 bucks. Ah, could have spent that on drinks, but you didn't want to. You're you're paying $50 for this time anyway. <laughs> it can't hurt. Give it a try. <laughs> 50 bucks. I'm sorry. But look, the fact remains that no matter how we act sometimes, douches are going to douche. Players are going to play. Haters are going to hate. We can't live our life trying to douche-proof ourselves, trying to fuckboy-proof ourselves. And it's it's tempting to want to do that if we've gotten our heart broken by a fuckboy, and who hasn't, right? I mean, they're very, they can be very charming. You know, players only love you when they're playing, you know? And I say this because we as women get so many messages from society about how we're supposed to be. Oh, that's too slutty. Oh, that's not slutty enough. Oh. And so we're just constantly in this, this shape-shifting, right? I want you to figure out what works for you. How sexy do you want to be on the internet? Maybe not sexy at all. Maybe like you're totally fine having an OnlyFans and showing your ass. Okay, there's upsides and downsides to both, right? It's all just about authenticity. Like whatever works for you. Some days I'm like, you know what? I am having a good tit day. Here they come. I'm having a good ass day. Let's see it. I don't know why I have to do this. <laughs> I wonder why I'm single. I'm like a, like a <laughs> viper. I'm like a king cobra doing a dance. I'm so sorry. So sorry. But like, I'm also a full grown adult. You know, I have a very strong sense of who I am. I don't care if people say, you're too slutty. It's like, go fuck yourself. I look great. By the way, I'm okay with that kind of feedback. I am for sure. When you're younger, you're not. And when we put things out there that invite opinions, we can be, it can be very like, malleable. We're just like wet cement when we're younger. So I'm not saying don't do that and like live your life in fear of what people are going to say about you. No, but just make sure you're comfortable before you do it. I posted risky things and I've had people be like, whoa, look at that. And I'm like, yeah, man, look at it. Zoom in on it. I'm fine with it, but I got fine with it way before I hit send, right? Way before I clicked post. The reason I'm able to do this is because I'm not living for likes. And look, I'm an influencer. <laughs> I lit I mean, I do live for life. Like, it's my business, right? So if anyone should be fixated on like comments and likes and all this, it should ostensibly be me. I really don't care. I post what I like to post. I post what I feel good about, what I want to remember. People don't like it. They don't have to fucking follow. They're not even paying for it. That absence of living for likes is about being a warm-blooded animal, you know, and knowing yourself through and through as much as you can. We're always evolving. That's okay but at least getting clear on how we want to portray ourselves to the world. You know what? If you're norm core and you love a nice gap khaki with a J crew sweater, girl, get it. Wear those sensible slacks and a low bun. If you like to dress up like a Kardashian, if you just want sheer this and blah, 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 amazing. I think most of us are both of those things. I like my comfies. I like my slutties, right? And that's our right, but... We have to always make sure we're doing the comfies or the slutties out of authenticity. A better way, a green flag of a guy sliding into your DM, asking you a question. This is always my advice to you. Like, ask a guy a question if you're in his DMs. First of all, questions make people feel like experts, right? They want, And guys especially want to feel useful. Men communicate to solve problems. Women communicate to build relationships. And you might be thinking, what problem is this dude solving saying he wants to see your butthole? is the problem of getting, of getting laid. That's clearly, he's not interested in like her mind or heart. How was your day? What's going on? Nope. This dude in my Tinder, had he started with, hey, how are you? Where are you from? Have you been in Montana long? Oh, and like softened me up and then be like, come downtown tonight. I was out and I maybe would have met up with him, but he led with such douchebaggery. I was like, thank you for showing me who you are. This is very useful. So if you're trying to slide into a dude's DMs, Ask a question about something he's posting that clearly he's passionate about. Oh my God, your coon hound is adorable. What is your best training tip? Because my favorite YouTuber, Shallon Lester, has a coon hound and he's like kind of a menace. Let him feel like an expert. And then require that of the people who are DMing you. They got to warm you up. Hey, how was your day? If they slide in with words like, oh my God, hey, beautiful. Hey, sweetie. Like, bro, save it. A guy should be a little bit nervous around you. If a guy isn't nervous either in real life on a date or even just over text. And you can tell when they are, Ayo, he was not nervous to speak to me. He didn't know who I was. They're not nervous. You know why? They don't care. There's no risk because, oh, she doesn't write back, fuck her, whatever. On to the next, on to the next. Fishing, fishing, fishing. A 
starving man is going to fish harder and smarter, right? Dude who's got all the time in the world can go to Taco Bell, lines in the water, maybe I get a bite, maybe I don't. Who gives a shit? I'll eat anything that comes out of there. So look at the nervousness level. A guy who's nervous, he's going to refine that message. He's not going to have it with poor punctuation. He's going to make sure that his sentences are good. He's looked at your page. He's saying something that's attention grabbing. He's put in a little thought and research. Whether this is DMs, Tinder, text message, whatever, it doesn't matter. That foresight should still be there. It's a green flag that a guy's quality. So I know this video started about, you know, just DMs and how to spot a thirsty DM. But of course it segued into something larger because we can say that Instagram is just about Instagram. No, it's like it's courtship rituals and courtship comes down to how do we feel about ourselves? What are we allowing? What do we require in a partner, right? So we really do have to pull back and look at the big picture sometimes. But in the meantime, look at the small picture, look at the small dicks and who they're attached to that might be in your DMs. Have your rubric for how someone is going to speak to you. Like this dude in my Tinder, he might've been really fun to hang out with. I don't allow someone to speak to me like that. I don't care how cool you are IRL. I don't care how good you are in bed. He wouldn't be. You come at me like that. <laughs> You're not coming at We'll see you later, Shalligators. Tell me what you think about this topic and stay tuned for some more videos. I am going to take a few days off next week because I'm going out of town. I just kind of want to relax, but I won't leave you high and dry. We're going to do a book club review of our book club selection, Essentialism. So pick it up at the link in the bio if you haven't. See you later.